We are revisiting some of our previous reports from Gaza to give you a sense of what life was like before this war and how things have gotten progressively worse. This was 12 years ago. This is the Erez crossing. It's controlled by Israel and is one of two civilian access points in and out of Gaza. But the reality is that these gates keep most Gazans locked inside. For many, it's impossible to get out. Young people uh, have no jobs, no hopes for a movement because the siege uh, Israel has imposed on Gaza does not allow people to move freely. There have been five wars since Hamas took control of Gaza in 2006, the one in 2014, the most brutal, until now. Sujaiya on the border with Israel, it is not recognizable now. Israel says it's targeting armed fighters and their underground tunnel network, but we see heartbreak and despair here. Gaza's largest hospital is at breaking point. There is unbearable grief. This is a genocide, this is a massacre, and I hope that some is being held accountable for it. This real impunity has gone so far now that they think they can do whatever with whoever. Fast forward four years. These young men, part of a generation who grew up under the blockade. There are no jobs, no opportunities. They are stuck here. We get power from our peaceful protest. They get their power from rifles and bullets and cause amputations. Israel's intelligence agency and the army warned the Israeli government that Gaza could explode if the restrictions continued. We also profiled Gaza's best-known lifeguard. When children come to the beach, you feel like they are releasing the depression they have inside. An Israeli Navy vessel lies in the background. We noticed it using a water cannon just before we started filming on what we can only assume was a Palestinian fishing boat. Perhaps getting too close to the Israeli-imposed invisible border, penned in, even at sea. Then, two years later, Israel's blockade of Gaza is into its 13th year. The water supply is sporadic, as is electricity, sanitation is an issue, and there is widespread poverty and unemployment. The United Nations issued a report eight years ago predicting that Gaza would become, quote, unlivable by 2020. Well, it is 2020 and still no political solution in sight. Umbalal reiterates what so many others have told us too. People are fed up with their leaders. I blame the officials who are sitting on their chairs and don't care about us. Even Hamas doesn't care about us. They're enjoying their good lives in their homes while our children can't get food. That same year, to show a different picture from Gaza, we visited a strawberry farm in the very north of the Gaza Strip, where Israeli forces are now operating. Abu Sami's family had been farming this land for generations. The darkest period in our lives is after 2006. The siege is really tough and it's banned all our movements. It affects every part of our lives and unfortunately things are getting worse. We tried to get in touch with some of the people in our reports to find out where are they now, whether they're still alive. But so far, we haven't been able to find out. Stephanie Decker, Al Jazeera. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.